new videos every day. I like to know things. Hi, my name is Natalie, and today I want to talk about irritable bowel syndrome, which is also called IBS. I don't want to say that it's near or dear to my heart, but it's something that I've personally experienced. Oh, I can definitely relate to you or if you know someone uh, who does have IBS. First, I want to explain what IBS is. It is a group of symptoms, and that's what actually syndrome means, a group of symptoms. And it can be anything from gas to bloating to diarrhea, constipation, or alternating constipation, diarrhea. IBS involves your large intestine, and so if you know someone who does have IBS, they'll complain of lower stomach trouble, lower stomach pain. Versus maybe someone who has GERD or heartburn, they'll complain of upper stomach pain, upper gastrointestinal distress. So large intestine is the last intestine of the digestive system. It's after the small intestine. It's where um, your bowel movements are formed. And so that's the part that is going to, to hurt you if you have IBS. Something that's really shocking about IBS too is that it is the most common diagnosis by a gastroenterologist in the United States. So over heartburn, over gluten sensitivities, any of those problems, irritable bowel syndrome is the most common diagnosis. So what's going on? There is a problem with our bodies, our environment, and the foods that we're eating. So for me, it started around my junior year of college, and I had really stressful classes, um, and then I had some family issues going on, so that was definitely impacting my digestive system, just all that stress. I was eating pretty well, actually I was eating very well, baked fish, salads with lots of vegetables, vinaigrette dressing, I was doing aerobics every day for an hour, so I had a healthy lifestyle, but certainly stress was doing something to my digestive system and it was making it to the point where it didn't matter what I ate, whether it was healthy or not, I was having severe problems running to the restroom in the middle of dinner. I could be out at a restaurant, um, you know, totally enjoying my night and then everything would break loose and I would, you know, the night was over and I was in agony and, and it just, it's not something you want to have to deal with on a long-term basis. So that's why I want to talk about some things today that can help you or your loved one and you don't have to deal with this on a long-term basis. So I've already mentioned that stress and diet impact how you are coping with IBS. So I want to talk about two nervous systems that we have. One is parasympathetic nervous system and one is a sympathetic nervous system. Don't let those freak you out. It's not complicated. It's just the parasympathetic nervous system governs our digestive system. The other one called the sympathetic nervous system governs how our body responds when we're stressed. So basically you have to kind of view it like one system's going up and the other one's going down and then they're moving to maintain balance. So when we are stressed, our digestive system and our digestive function decreases and then when we're relaxed and we are in a controlled environment and we don't need to be stressed, then actually our digestive system works the best. So when you're stressed, and you're eating poorly, both those things will actually make your symptoms worse.
some of the foods that can influence how your large intestine reacts and how your digestive system reacts overall is the fatty foods, fried foods, especially dairy because all those are high in fats. So any food that is high in fat is really going to escalate your symptoms. If you are trying to still do hamburgers, french fries, fried chicken, and milkshakes, and you think that just miraculously your symptoms are going to go away after you've had them for years and years, it's going to come back to what is your diet. That's really what is going to influence how your system is handling stress and how you're able to function when you eat food. Chocolate is also high in fat, so that's something that you're going to have to limit. Alcohol metabolizes fat, so again, that's something that you really need to reduce in your diet. Carbonated beverages promote bloating, so if you are someone who battles chronic bloating, that is definitely something you want to stay away from. There's nothing worse than being bloated and then doing something that causes more bloating. And if you are someone who experiences bloating, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You don't want to do anything to make it worse. So stay away from all those fizzy sodas. And also, last but not least, caffeine. Caffeine is one thing to stay away from for more than one reason. Caffeine does stimulate peristalsis, which is the movement that the large intestine moves, bowel movements through your system. So when you're taking drinks and that have caffeine, you're making those movements increase. You're increasing peristalsis. So if you are an IBS person who is prone to diarrhea, you're actually going to make your diarrhea worse by consuming products that have caffeine in them. When I went to my primary care physician, sat down with her, talked about all my symptoms, talked about all the problems I was having, and it was about a 30-minute appointment, and she sent me home with a fiber supplement and also sent me to a gastroenterologist. But I went ahead and took that fiber supplement, and it just made my symptoms worse. I was extra bloated, you know, extra cramping. So it was frustrating for me, who was personally experiencing all this.